Hi, I am Daniele Teti, I am an Embarcadero MVP and CIO of BitTime Professional, a software company which provides consultancy, trainings and custom development based in Italy. Today we will talk about the refactoring and design patterns. Uh, the concept uh, which Will Skill Sprint is about can be applicable in all platform and languages, but the sample will be Delphi specific. During this skill sprint, we'll try to answer to the following questions. What's refactoring? What's refactoring to pattern? Why I should care about it? And then after some introduction, we'll see a live demo. Let's start with a brief introduction about refactoring. What's refactoring? Refactoring is a controlled technique for improving the design of an existing code base, which simplifies the bug lower the code maintenance cost and to have a, a higher return on investment and a lower TCO, uh, total cost of ownership. And the refactoring, last but not least, keeps developers happy. And what about design patterns? Uh, the definition of design pattern is uh, quite popular and uh, say that the design pattern explains a general design that addresses a recurring a design problem in object-oriented system. Design pattern improves developers' discussion because you have a shared vocabulary about uh, uh, what you are working on and speed up the learning process for the new team members which is quite important for uh, all sides member, all sides uh, team and uh, allows to learn more uh, from the uh, others experience, from the other uh, people that are working on a similar problem that you are working on now and simplify the debug. The book which uh, uh, defines the refactoring as we know today is this one. Uh, it's, called, it's from Martin Fowler uh, which introduced the refactoring process. Uh, the book is uh, around 70 refactoring, uh, it's talk of, uh, of 70 refactoring described in details and several development environments, this is quite important, Delph include, automate many of the refactoring described in this book and we will see a couple of it. Uh, refactoring has become a full-fledged part of the software development lexicon so it's quite important to master the concept exposed in that book. And uh, just as a natural evolution of the first book, this is the uh, second important book, Refactoring to Pattern. Uh, it is a book by Joshua Kedievsky and is a marriage of the refactoring with patterns and suggest, for example, that using patterns to improve an existing design is better than using pattern early in the new design. And this is true, whatever code is years old or minutes old. Now, uh, this is the introduction, so let's see some uh, real code with some live demo. Uh, we'll see some general refactoring supported by Delphi Editor and some Delphi specific refactoring. This is a simple Delphi application which show one of the most, uh, let's say, popular code pattern in the Delphi developers uh, mind historically. Uh, this is a, a, a form with a button and a progress bar on this box. I have here a main data model with a connection uh, to the interface database or what database you like and uh, uh, a query which uh, does a select stars from select star from customer. The data model is um, almost empty because I have only the components dropped on the design on the designer and then all the code is uh, uh, on the main form or it is in the actual form uh, under the button. So I uh, uh, I'm doing some fake customer processing. I'm starting with the clearing the uh, list box where my customer will be added and then uh, reset the progress bar uh, position property, open the query and then look through all the data set doing the actual process and after close the query. It's a quite uh, um, popular it's a quite popular uh, 
let's say, code pattern in the Delft world. Uh, what are the problems? This is quite a, a, a good smell uh, because uh, we are accessing we are accessing uh, with a higher high level of uh, intimacy with uh, the uh, components on other form or other data model. So we can uh, uh, have a problem to maintain to maintain this uh, this code because it's not correctly separated. Uh, I have code which update the uh, user interface here, uh, mix it with code which do the actual, which does the actual uh, work. So, how we can improve this code using refactoring? Let's start with the live demo. Um, I have here um, a Dolph Enterprise which have this fantastic menu refactor with the refactoring engine. Let's start with the refactor. Let's see how this application works. It run and then here as you can simply understand click in the bottom I see my customer filling the list box doing some obscure processing. Okay let's improve this this code to make it simple to maintain and easily tested. Uh, let's extract this code which actually access data from the initialization data, the user interface related data. Select this, go to refactor and select extract method. This extract method is one of the most important refactoring uh, pattern. Uh, it simply extract a selected uh, number of row, um, inspecting the code, uh, understanding you know, what are the, the variable used. So you can, using this uh, uh, refactor, you can separate your code so also long methods can be cut down and shorter the more uh, manageable size method. You can also access it using shift uh, control m extract method oh, so uh, the choosing the correct name is a really important part of the refactoring um, phase in this case we can call this method the extracted method process customers process customer okay and then the Delphi uh, refactor engine extracted the process customer method and called it where before the code were, were directly written. So this code has been extracted by this position in a new method. Okay, now uh, our code, our uh, application works, does the same job as before. But it's quite better now but we can do many many things to make this application better for example we can extract uh, from this method we can separate the user interface related uh, code from the uh, data access code as you can see these three lines have to uh, are related to the user interface. This three line can be refactoring a lot to separate user related, user interface related code from the other data access code. But the inline variable can make this quite uh, uh, complicated. So as a first uh, as a first step we can use the introduce variable refactor. I can select the part that which I have to, I want to uh, substitute with a variable, right click, refactor, introduce variable refactoring. Here I can call this uh, variable L progress. Progress, that's it, in 64. And then 
use this variable instead of directly assign uh, the value. Also, here when I uh, want to add the uh, when I add the uh, customer name in the list box, I can use the same refactor introduce variable L customer. And now I have two new variable L customer and L progress uh, which I can put directly to the start of the of the while loop. Now the code can be easily uh, separated. I can select this and reapply the extract method refactor. Uh, what this new method will do will does uh, it's quite simple. Update UI. You can use also more specific methods, but for now it's K. Okay. Update UI. Uh, is this code running in the same way? Yeah, we can. We can try it now. Click the button. Yeah, quite the same way. But now it's more separated, and which is a good thing. Uh, as you can see, this code now is uh, uh, a bit more, um, a bit more manageable. is uh, It's a, a bit better, but there is also there is still a, a, the big problem or the big problem of this code. Uh, we are accessing directly the main model, the main, the data model here um, in the user interface code, which is quite bad. But now. I have a more cleaner method here in the process customers. There is no directly um, reference to the user interface code. So I can use another refactor which is called move method. But uh, um, uh, Delphi doesn't support the move method for uh, instance for instance method. If I try to uh, move the method, you can only move static method to another class or class to another namespace because it's, it's quite complicated to do it, but we can do easily by hand. We can copy this code, go to the main method, paste here, change the name of the class, and then Ctrl Shift C, automatically the method is created here. I have to move this private method to public, can save it, and now this process customer can be removed from the main yeah from the main form. If I try to uh, compile this, there are obviously error because process customer doesn't have update UI method. So uh, we can uh, add another parameter here to the process caster which is the connection between the data model and the user interface code. What we can use? Uh, I think that an uh, anonymous method can be enough. So we can call this parameter uh, on progress and declare it as t approach string unsign integer 32 yeah and add the same also here in the declaration and now this update UI become a call to the uh, a on progress using the same values now the process customer should works fine but uh, I uh, don't have uh, blah, blah, blah. it's progress no it's L customer L progress customer L progress because it's string it yeah. okay now this process customers mm, uh, doesn't have the, the anonymous method 
to actually update the user interface. But it's quite simple to introduce it. Procedure. We can also uh, copy this declaration, but it's quite simple. Our customer string. Progress win thirty two. Yeah. We have to call the process customer on the main DM. Okay, it works. But we have to actually call the update UI code. So, update UI, a customer, here is a progress, and a customer. It, comp it compiles, run, it works as before. Uh, but what we done what we did. Um, we simplified a lot the code in the user interface, which could be also uh, under an action list, for example, and uh, uh, we uh, strongly separated the user interface code from the code which actually does the work. We can obviously remove the reference to the uh, minded model here because now could be simply wrong. Okay. So now in our dot model, this is the, there is the uh, the processing, the actual processing code. We are called back to update the user interface, but we don't know the user interface. And this is a, a an important an important uh, object that we reached. While the user interface code doesn't access directly to the data, and this is another important thing that we reached. This is a quite simple uh, process uh, which show applicable ap applicable to the um, to many many. Uh, old or legacy or also new developed code in Delphi. When you have the data manager in the user interface, you have to rethink about your process and move the that data, that uh, code in the data model or in a service classes or uh, something that is not the user interface. And here we have used a couple of uh, uh, refactoring pattern introduced by Martin Fowler in, the, in his uh, book. Uh, for a brief recap, we talk about extracted method, uh, we talk about introduced variable, and we talk about which is uh, the, this uh, uh, this refactor are supported directly by Delphi. So uh, introduced variable and extract method. And uh, then we also use the move move method uh, refactoring, but we, we did the work by hand. Okay, uh, we saw some basic code refactoring, but obviously this is not all the story about refactoring. In the Martin Fowler book, there are a lot of refactoring patterns which allows to improve the existing, the, the design of existing code. In this slide you can see some of them. I strongly suggest to read this book if you want to write better code or if you need to maintain your legacy code. The refactoring techniques introduced in the Fuller book are really useful also to introduce the same pattern in the legacy or a new code. The book of refactoring to patterns teach how to do it. This is absolutely another suggested reading. As we told already in the skill sprint, refactoring starts when you write your second line of code. Don't trust your first attempt to structure your code to your design, but use the refactoring to improve it every time you touch it. 
First, some learning resources. If you have Dolphin Enterprise uh, or better, be sure to understand all the potentiality of the refactoring engine inside the tool. Uh, here you can see the, uh, the link to the document, to the documentation. If you have an Delphi Enterprise, be sure to understand the concept so that you can do it by hand. And uh, then this is the details of the two book mentioned in this skill sprint. And if you want to follow a training, you can also check a bit time professional trainings or ask information about it. Okay, guys. Thank you for your attention. So is the extraction refactoring smart enough to relocate local variables? Yes. It, uh, it is can relocate the local variables, moving them to new extracted method as needed. And uh, he can understand also if uh, in the extracted method uh, you are actually modifying the, um, the local variables and that local variables will be passed by um, reference. So it's quite smart to extract method um, refactoring. So Jeff saying that it seems like the code became more spaghetti-like. Uh, what, what exactly is the purpose of the refactoring? Why is it we went through, we broke a single method into multiple methods and moved it around? Well, uh, at the, the first scene, you can, um, you can see this code quite strange because you are uh, used to have all your code in one place and so on. But uh, uh, once you get, um, once you get uh, used to do uh, the correct way to separate the responsibilities, which is uh, one of the most difficult things in the uh, computer science uh, and um, brilliant software in general, is uh, absolutely the best things you can do because it's very, very difficult to understand uh, maybe 50 lines, 100 lines uh, methods, uh, 100 lines code methods um, compared to, the, to, a normal, to a normal 3, 10, 20 line um, at best uh, method. So if you can separate the responsibilities in the long term, in much also in the short term, you have a big, big uh, gain in terms of uh, productivity, in terms of time to debugging, uh, uh, and so on. Obviously, in a demo simple like this one, which are maybe 10 lines of code, uh, the, the big, the big uh, um, gains is not so clear, but you have to extract the, the ideas and then apply that to a real, real code, uh, real world problem. Then you will see really a, 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 big, a big gain in your productivity. And also because you can now, separating the responsibilities, separating the data access code from the user interface related code, you can start to do actual testing you can unit test it, you can do automatic testing uh, for the not UI related uh, code. So it's absolutely a must. You cannot do in different way um, if you want to be really productive uh, and so on. You know, that's a really good point that it makes it easier to create unit tests. What is the C++ equivalent of anonymous methods? In C++11, you have the fantastic Lambda expressions, which are really um, uh, more or less one-on-one uh, related to uh, anonymous methods. C++11 had some, um, some details more specific uh, compared to anonymous methods, but for our needs are absolutely replaceable with anonymous methods. And while if you still don't use C++11, and I strongly suggest to use C++11, uh, also because new uh, in Delphi, in a C++ builder, uh, 10 Seattle, uh, there is support for C++11 auto for Windows 32-bit target, which is really uh, really good. I start to to like uh, C++ uh, uh, another times <laughs> <laughs> because of C++11, and uh, you can you can also use on C++ 0x. Uh, you can use uh, some um, mechanism to extract interface from the anonymous method in Delphi side, but in C++11 is really really simple. Yeah, the lambdas are really really great feature. There's a lot of cool stuff in C++11. That's, that's true. Yeah, yeah.
Uh, would it be possible to directly pass the update UI instead of declaring an anonymous method which invokes update UI? Um, yes, but you have to pass a metered pointer and you still don't get too much gain from the anonymous method stuff. I strongly suggest to make it confident with the anonymous method because it really, really simplifies your development and makes your code more modern and you don't have to pass uh, uh, sender and so on. You can just write your code where you are. You don't have to declare it something, pass a method. Yes, you can. You, you can do it, but try give a try to the anonymous method because it really um, makes your code better. This is my personal experience and I, I think this is really uh, shared experience. Yeah, anonymous methods, it's kind of a little different because we're not used to writing code that way, but it's one of those things that I found once you wrap your brain around it and start using it, it really uh, lets you do some cool things that you just never could do before, and it just makes it a lot more powerful. And like you said, it keeps your code where you want it instead of having to go put it someplace else. So I think it makes it easier to maintain and such as well. Uh, it, yeah, when, when I... Um, when it happened that I have to work on the um, program with, with the old Delphi version and I don't have generics, I don't have anonymous methods, I don't have uh, extended RTTI, I, I feel quite compressed <laughs> because once you start to use anonymous methods and generics you are really confident with them. Your, your mind will change to use that. Yeah, it, it's kind of like object-oriented programming. I remember because I've started programming back in Turo Pascal, and I remember when objects-oriented programming came out, I'm like, I don't see the point of that. I mean, I can just do all this stuff in, <laughs> in procedural programming. You don't need these objects. That's just extra fluff. And now that I understand the concepts behind object-oriented programming and how it helps you to structure and have m larger programs, it's like, oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to go back to procedural programming. <laughs> so it, it, it's one of those paradigm shifts that uh, takes a while. Yeah, to... yeah, it's a paradigm shift. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Al's pointing out that you can declare a method pointer in a separate unit and set it to point to the procedure and use that one in the method to work with the procedure. Yes, you can. Although I think anonymous methods is a better way. Let's see. Question here about, okay, so asking about passing like data directly to something like the, the T-chart from Stima, passing the data to be plotted, how through that, who should be responsible for that data? Yes, you can, obviously, yes. Uh, you have to identify in your code uh, what is your model. Uh, what, are, what is the, the data, uh, which should not be uh, directly in the user interface, but once you, once you have identified your model, you can use that instance, that reference, to pass uh, all over your, your application layer to make it uh, the um, uh, to make it uh, the, the the user interface be updated. Then, if that model acts like uh, mm, let's say uh, a subject in an uh, um, observing uh, design pattern, you can just move the model. You can change the model, and then the user interface is updated. But if your model is a data transfer object or just like a value object on something else, you can modify your model and then use some code uh, to update the user interface, just like we did uh, here in the in the demo. Uh, use that model to update your user interface. Let's say you could have a, a reference to that data set which does uh, something and you have to pass that data set connected to the user interface in some way uh, using data source, the big grid, um, some other grids uh, and so on to the different layer which actually acts on that data set. You can disable control, pass the data set uh, and all the layers do something on this data set and then when all the layers return at the other data set, just enable control. You don't have to uh, update your user interface because the component already did it for you. But if the object is not so uh, evoluted, is not so um, uh, connected, interconnected, you have to do it manually. But you can use the same approach also with other components. It's always valid. That's a good point. Yeah, makes sense.
So uh, David's saying, uh, I could see the refactoring bit, and that was great. But where does refactoring patterns come in? How is how is it we've refactored? Uh, uh, okay, okay, um, okay. We have to separate two concepts: refactoring patterns and refactoring to design patterns. Uh, you can use the refactoring patterns to support the refactoring to patterns. Um, let's say the first book the book um, from Martin Fowler actually uh, talks about uh, refactoring patterns so extract method introduce variable um, move method move class and so on using that basic refactoring pattern included also in Delphi also in other um, tools which are really standard okay really standard it makes sense to use it also if you uh, code in Delphi in C++ in other languages whatever using that re uh, basic refactoring you can apply all this refactoring to create uh, architecture based on uh, design pattern but you have to know the design pattern and then uh, here the second book can be useful to understand how to use the basic refactoring to a specific design pattern and uh, um, and then this is the uh, the difference one is the let's say the little brick where you can build your building at, to make the the, the um, all the architecture based on design patterns this is the difference you use the refactorings in order to go from the way the code was implemented to now the code follows the patterns that were defined in the the patterns book yeah uh, refactoring to the level supported by Delphi is on the roadmap for C++ can you tell when tell us what might actually appear on the time scale uh, I believe that is on the roadmap for this year if I if that recall correctly Roger so should be something you look forward to this year. Yeah, the design patterns is another one of those things that I think, uh, for me at least, took a little while to understand and why that was. And the, the, the part you point out where it's about improving the vocabulary, I think, is really a good point. Because basically, you read through this and like, I've done this before. And that's the point. Is it's What it's doing is it's going through and identifying useful... Uh, designs, useful patterns, things that we've done before, other people have done before, and how to uh, redo those. So by once we've identified these patterns, then we can uh, re-implement them and then also discuss them. Uh, Walter's asking, do all these new procedure calls make the code slower? So that's a really interesting question, Walter. So there's two things to consider. First of all, the compiler does automatic inlining. So inlining means if the procedure is a very um, small procedure call and it's done a lot, the compiler will automatically take that procedure call and uh, unwrap it, if you will, into the place it's being called from. So it can automatically inline small um, procedures. You can mark procedures as inline if you want to give the compiler a hint that you think this should be inlined, but the compiler can make that decision automatically as well. So first, that's first of all. Second of all, um, the making a procedure call is a couple additional instructions. Most of the time, we're waiting on the user or the database disk access, etc. We're not waiting on the CPU. So if you're in a situation where you have a loop, you're doing a lot of processing, then that is when you want to consider the optimization of pulling out additional procedure calls. Most likely, the impact is going to be imperceivable to any users if adding additional calls in here. So uh, so the answer is yes it makes the code slower but the reality is it's making the code more maintainable and being more maintainable makes it easier to fix issues and stuff so it's, it's kind of a you don't want to get ahead of yourself in saying oh I gotta put everything in one procedure so it's faster no that's not the case you're not you're probably not have any bottleneck there that you're hitting 
Um, Thomas just added, he said, in my experience, often refactoring results in faster code over time because the code becomes better maintainable and hence more organized. The, unless, yeah, unless you're optimizing something that is running, you know, keeping the CPU pegged for a period of time, then it's not. It's, it, you're not, you're, you don't need to worry about that. So don't optimize for slowness, optimize for maintainability. And then if you discover it's slow, use a profiler, find out where it's slow, why it's slow, and then address speed issues. Um, there was another comment here. Does adding new methods and variables use more memory than before? So similar to the idea of having more calls being slower. Um, again, it may use marginally more memory, but it's probably not going to be an impact. It's the CPU or the system's able to page memory in and out as needed, first of all. Second of all, so let's say you have um, some code and you have an integer you're using up at the top that's called um, age, okay? And then later on, you have another place that you want to use another integer in this, in here, and so you would declare a new integer called um, count. Now, if you never use both age and count, if you use age for a while and then stop using it and then start using count, behind the scenes, the compiler will say, you know what, I don't need to keep age in memory anymore, so I'll remove it from memory, and count can then use that memory. So even though your code is easier to understand because you have two different variables there with two names that specifically define what the variables are doing, it's not actually using any more memory. Okay, So the compiler is doing a lot of optimizations for your code um, to make it behave better. The OS is doing optimizations for keeping things in memory that need to be in memory, moving things out that don't need to be in memory. So again, don't sacrifice maintainability and readability of your code for some worry about um, things being uh, taking up more memory. Now, maintain your code, make refactor it, make it optimiz optimized, and then if you discover using a profiler that you are using more memory, look at where you're using memory. Chances are it's not in adding an extra integer to uh, your routine to make it more readable and more maintainable. It's probably somewhere else where you're keeping a data set, a copy of a data set in memory or something like that. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, Neil just pointed out premature optimization is the root of all evil. Uh, I don't know that it's the root of all evil, but it's certainly, it, it's one of those things you need to understand the scope and impact of things. So, you know, realize, you know what, I probably don't need to have the entire database in memory. That's the purpose of the database is let the database handle that. So that's a good idea. But worrying about having additional variable declarations or additional procedure calls to make your code more retainable, that's premature optimization you don't need to do. Okay, so here's a link that probably says premature optimization is the root of all evil. So I'll take a look at that. Um, so Richard's asking, do the refactoring books use Pascal or C++ for demo code? I think they use C or C++, um, possibly, probably. I don't think they use Pascal, but they do uh, actually have like um, UML diagrams and stuff like that. I, I've read... I think I've, yeah, I've read, I think I'm, I think I've read all three of those, or at least consulted all three of those, and they were very informative, very helpful. If you go to the page here, actually, um, this down here says important refactoring patterns. This links to some pages that have the UML diagrams and go in just the, the t um, start of kind of what's covered in there. So see, this is, yeah, this is C code here. So that's not a UML. There's no UML diagram there for that one. Let's see for another one. So see here, this has a UML diagram. So it's, it, in the book, the code examples may be in C, C++. You're going to be able to read it, I would suspect, and it's explained in UML, it's explained in text, the benefits and such. Uh, this is are there, so you should still be able to take advantage of it. I think um, one of Nick Hodge's Coding in Delphi books also covers some of these techniques as well. So definitely take a look at that. A nice interesting programming. Yes, this is a great, I thought this was really well put together. Um, 
the modeling tools enterprise are equally suitable for refactoring. Yes, that's very true, actually, Thomas. The in, uh, enterprise has the enterprise edition, which we have that great sale going on right now for, has some modeling tools in there and design patterns and stuff like that, which is really actually quite powerful. If you go in there, you can say, hey, I need to refactor this, I need to move this around. Way more powerful than the stuff that was shown here. Um, actually, we should probably do a video on that because it's some really, really cool stuff. Uh, can we use refactoring to improve code performance? So we kind of touched on this earlier. When you refactor code, it makes it obvious where, it makes it easier to find the places you can improve performance. It makes it easier to understand the code. So that is um, how you can improve it. So it doesn't, uh, refactoring doesn't typically improve code performance directly. So technically refactoring is modifying code to make it easier to maintain without affecting its behavior. So it's not, you're not refactoring to improve performance, but you refactor it, you're like, you know what, I see here I am doing, this is really, um, uh, you can discover where you're doing things that are really not well optimized, where you're doing things that are, uh, maybe you're copying something multiple times or you don't really need to, you only need to have it once. For example, you could have maybe some code peppered throughout the form that really should be, or you could have the same code over and over and over again where it's allocating the same thing. Maybe it's going out and reading the same uh, table from the database into memory multiple times. That's not efficient. So if you discover that in your refactoring, you're like, you know what, I need to make an object over here that maintains that. Okay, and maybe it goes out and checks to make sure the table hasn't been updated or something like that. But once you, you can make those discoveries through refactoring that make it easier to improve the optimization. So, for example, if you went through and implemented the refactorings that were shown here, where you separated the data access from the user interface, in the future, if you're like, you know what, hey, we got some new, uh, you know, originally used BDE, but now we're going to switch to FireDAC, if all that code is in one routine, one unit, because it's all in your data module, that's a whole lot easier to refactor and move from BDE to FireDAC than if it's peppered throughout all your user interface code. And so you can make those changes resulting in big performance improvements without having to uh, go through every source file in your code, which makes it way easier to maintain. Uh, same is true for fixing bugs. That's true. It's way easier to fix bugs when, once you've done this. The, that, that, and see, this is really the key behind refactoring and design patterns is maintainability. And if you think about it, your code spends way more time in maintenance than it does in development. So it really is important to consider that to uh, make your code more maintainable. So George is saying that the code at the end was a little more difficult to read than the original. He missed the point. The code that he was here that he showed was really, really simple code. When you um, have production code and you have your UI code and your data access code mixed in together, that's going to be huge, probably have huge routines. By separating this out, it makes it easier to understand, easier to maintain. Especially if you have like a team of people, you can have one person that maybe understands this one unit, all the data access really, really well, and somebody else understands the UI really, really well. Or you can have make changes to just the data access or just the UI without having to modify every file in the application. So the more you can decouple your code, which is what you're showing here, the easier it is to maintain in the long run. This is, like I said, a very simple code example. Chances are if you look at your code that you have and think about what parts of this are data access, what parts of this are updating user interface, and how would I separate those apart, um, once you go through those stages of making that, you'll see that it uh, breaks things apart into smaller pieces, making it easier to maintain. You know, if you can't see an entire routine on the screen, that used to be my rule of thumb. If I have a routine that has more lines than I can see on my screen, doesn't mean buy a bigger monitor although bigger monitors are nice, it means it's probably doing too much in there and I can't look at that and understand what's going on. If you can look at it and understand what's going on, it makes it easier to debug, easier to maintain. Inline directive, after declaring method, the guarantee inlining. So inline, using the inline method does not guarantee inlining. It is a hint to the compiler. The compiler will ultimately make the decision whether it can inline something or not. 
Um, at least that's my understanding of the way the compiler works. And the reason is is because you may put inline on something that uh, can't be inline for one reason or another. So if you do have inline, you will get warnings, for example, saying, hey, um, this can't be inline because you're not using this unit. That So let's like, say, for example, you're in unit A, and you have a routine in unit B, and unit B uses unit C, and you try and inline a routine from unit B, and that routine uses a routine from unit C. If unit A doesn't use unit C, then it can't inline the routine in unit B. And you'll get a warning that you need to fix that if you want to have the in things inlined. So it can only ever be a hint, otherwise you could generate broken code. Uh, would doing this on FireMonkey slow an app down and add to the memory use? Uh, we already addressed that. Not notice. Big number of procedures shouldn't be an issue, otherwise we'd never write software with any procedures, we'll only make a few big ones. Correct. More procedures and routines is easier than long ones. Will the demo code both before and after be available, especially the callback part? Uh, I will get it, we'll get that added to the download page. Hello, I actually just updated the page with a link to a code rage session that Jeff Lefebvre did previously on uh, maintainable code. He covers some of the same sort of uh, information, kind of the idea, some of the more ideas. So if you do want more information about this, check that code rage session out. Um, and it's about an hour long video with Q&A and everything on there. So I see there's that uh, YouTube video of separating logic and UI, which uh, connects to uh, a question, I think, that Lucas has there about what about cr when you're you creating an entity, would it be a good idea to put it in a separate module and a separate unit in the case you're just saying, hey, put it in a data module and then instantiate them if you need them? Yeah, you can certainly do that. I mean, really, this is about uh, loosely coupling it. And then when you look at your application and realize, you know what, I have uh, two separate, you know, data models, modules really, you could, you know, I'm, sometimes I'm using these objects, sometimes I'm using these objects, I don't ever need to use, or rarely ever need to use both, then, yeah, sure, make them a separate a data module and just instantiate the one individual data modules you need. Yeah, really, this is about, you know, looking at uh, loosely coupling your code, making sure that each routine, each class is very focused on what it does, so it's not doing too much because the more it does, the harder it is to maintain. Uh, Neville was saying, I uh, really liked the webinar, and he's saying a webinar that does more about uh, refactorings that we support uh, would be great, and that's a, definitely a good idea. Um, maybe also some little shorter little how-to videos uh, on, on each of the different refactorings would probably be good, and relating them to back to Martin Fowler and other people who, uh, yeah. who spent a lot of time on this. So I'll add uh, refactorings and the IDE to my ex expanding list of short how-to videos that we'd like to build. And we're also looking at what other webinars we're going to do for the rest of the year. So stay tuned for all of that. Thanks for the suggestion. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, your time, and thanks you for this great skill sprint. All right. We'll talk to everyone later. See you all next time. Bye. Bye-bye.